Press conference number two. Gentlemen, welcome from the national champion, Cortland Red Dragons. <laughs> That's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> I figured it, figured it would for you. We have with us head coach, Kurt Fitzpatrick, wide receiver, Cole Burgess, quarterback and MOP, Zach Boyes, and Boys. linebacker, Jaden Martinez. Boyes, apologize for that. Okay. Coach, a moment with comments from you about today's game, please. Uh, awesome. I mean, I don't know what it looked like on TV, but it was a, from my angle. What a great football game. Kind of the tale of two halves. In the first half, both defenses played really good. Um, our defense, so proud of the way they started the game. And that was our focus all week. You know, when you zoom out and look at North Central play, they jump out to such big leads in the first quarter. Like they swarm people in the first quarter of games. And um, that was, I knew that was a huge key for us. We had to, we had to match their physicality early um, because we, I thought, um, this is no disrespect to anybody, but I thought we were more comfortable playing in close games in the second half. And so if we could drag them into the second half in a tight game, then we could at least have a chance to, to make some plays in the, in the end to win. Um, so, you know, credit to their offense for, for figuring some things out at halftime. Credit to our offense as well. Um, just a great back and forth game. Um, awesome college football game in a great stage. Um, Salem is a great host for this game, and uh, I hope that showed to the TV, uh, on TV to the nation. Um, but just very, so proud of our players. I can't, I'm just smiling ear to ear. Um, how they, they kept bouncing back, next play. And um, all you gotta do is win by one, and uh, we found a way to win by one today. Go ahead and go to some questions here. We'll start with Mark Berman, Roanoke Times. Two questions a piece, please, until we move through everybody. Um, for the players, what does it mean to you to be part of the first uh, national championship team in your school's history? Everything. You know, this is what it's what you come to Cortland for. Um, this is what you dream about growing up, man. You know, you just want to be able to be on this stage um, and and just get the chance to play in the national championship. And you know, it's any given any given night. Um, but to do it for Cortland, um, with that C across our chest, I mean, it means everything, man. The the support we've gotten all week from the alumni, everybody. It just is, um, there's no other place. Nowhere, nowhere else you'd rather be than Cortland, New York, man. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he said it all. It means everything. We work like really hard all year round in the spring, all those hours that we're waking up early, we're, we're getting in the, the weight room, we're out there practicing in the cold northeast weather in uh, Feb March, whatever it is. It's, it's cold out there. That's it, it, all I got to say. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, every team does it. But to be the team that takes it the distance and, and wins it all is special. I'm a senior, so this is, that was my last college game, and it ain't nothing better than that. <laughs> um, I mean, this game means everything, man. We just came out and just knew what we had to do and just got the job done. But I'm, I'm just extremely blessed to be a part of this team, and uh, I'm happy I'm here and ride with these guys for life now. So. Um, very happy about tonight, and hopefully we uh, do this next year. Uh, Zach, you guys had only three points in the first half. What changed it? Why was your offense so unstoppable in the second half? Um, well, I think in the first half, we just – we had – how many possessions did we have in the first half? What, three? Three possessions? Yeah. That and, includes uh, the two-minute. It includes a two-minute drill. So, um, in our first two possessions, we really moved the ball down the field. First one, we just didn't capitalize on a big play. Um, the second one, we just – you know, we're inside the five-yard line and just didn't score. So we just knew that we just had to keep on playing our game and that when we got more chances that we'll be able to score. Um, so it, it was a credit to our defense. I mean, they were they, – they got the stops they needed and got us the ball back. And then whenever we had the ball, we just knew that we had a great game plan coming in. And, um, you know, I liked, uh, I liked everything that we had all week. And um, we just had to go in there and, you know, get rolling, really, um, and get the ball. You know, it felt like we didn't have the ball in the first half. So more possessions, more points. Greg Thomas, T3Football.com, two questions. Earlier this week, Cole, you told us that this was on your vision board. How does the reality compare to that vision? So I'm, I don't know. This is, this is awesome. This is awesome. I put it on my vision board years ago, never really thinking this was possible. I just put everything that I wanted on there. And a lot of things have been happening, and this is one of them. And this is this is a special moment for for me, and my my whole team, my coaches. This is my, Corlin. This is amazing for Corlin. I'm happy I get to be a part of it. 
Uh, Coach, I'm going to ask about the uh, field goal at the end of the first half. Is that something you do because you know you're getting the ball back and you got a chance to stack points that way? Yeah. Um, there wasn't much time when we got the ball back. And so if scoring a touchdown there, it's, it's good, it was going to be difficult. So we were just trying to kind of navigate it down if we could and get it into, into field goal range. Um, and, and it was going to be tough. Like we, we were planning on going to have to throw a Hail Mary and then Zach scrambled and they, they took a, the late hit out of bounds. And that was like, okay, uh, field goal. And knowing we got the ball, that's why you defer, right? The old Bill Belichick middle eight, last four, first four. Um, you know, we if we can we get some points there, and then going into halftime, we had just scored, and we're getting the ball first. I knew we could move the ball, like Zach said. We we were moving the ball. We just didn't finish in the red zone. We just didn't connect on a couple of plays in our first drive. We knew we we knew we could move the ball on them. Um, so getting that field goal was huge because again, I I felt like if we could get the lead. That part of them would they would flinch. I, I just felt I just felt it. They did it in the Warper game. Um, I, you could you could see them on film, kind of tense up when Warper was making a run. I felt like if we could get the lead somehow. Now who knows? I didn't know we could have come out here and been down 28 nothing at the front end of the first quarter. You don't know, but in that moment, I felt like we could get three and then go down and score. That you know we were gonna if we could do that, we were gonna be there for all for all four quarters. Um, and and that's how it was. But yeah, we. The field goal at the end of the first half was huge. I think for our confidence too, just just to get on the board and break the steal. Because I did not, I chose to go for fourth and two when we could have had an easy field goal er, earlier in the in the game. But um, yeah, I thought that was, that was big to, to break the seal, get some points, and go into halftime with momentum. Keith McMillan, D3Football.com. Two questions. If I told you guys you were going to give up 583 yards today 404 rushing and still find a way to win uh would you believe it and would you believe it given the postseason that you've had each game has been remarkable in its own way whether you've had to survive at the end or you have this back and forth crazy first uh first half or you uh, play a 35 point first half in the semifinal would you believe that uh this game was was 7-3 at halftime and 38-37 uh, at the end. I mean, just take, give me your thoughts, please, on uh, you know, what a remarkable run it's been through five games. It, the run has been ridiculous. Um, starting off hot in Endicott and then Grove City, those were some nail biters that we made it through. And then obviously the last two weeks after that were uh, a lot easier. Not easier, but we played a lot better. Um, and then this game, I mean, it's a national championship going up against the defending champs, North Central, you know, getting all the number one votes. And, and you said if you told us we had, we gave up that many yards and still won, I would have believed you considering how the postseason went. We would have had one more yard than them, one more point, and that's what happened. I love this team, man. We, we, we fight, we, we grind, and we make it happen. Even if it's not pretty, we make it happen. Grove City wasn't pretty, Endicott wasn't pretty, but we made it happen, we made it happen tonight. Keith, one more. This is, uh, this is for, uh, for Jaden, and uh, Kurt, you can jump in on this if you want, but um, tell me about uh, the timeout and the two-point play, All right? You see what they come out with the first time, kind of sprint rollout. Looks like it's maybe gonna be front, front pylon throw to D'Angelo, uh, and so you call the timeout, and, and they decided to, to change their look. How come you guys were, were on it? Uh, as well as you were, Jaden, you can start, and, and Kurt, if you want to jump um, in. Honestly, we uh, went into the timeout, and we knew that that was the first play for a two-point conversion, so we knew we were getting something else. We just had to settle down and just relax and make sure we stopped that play. And uh, we knew we were going to handle adversity, so we were ready for it. We just needed to relax, take a breath, and just make the next play, because that's all we would talk about, and next plays, next play mentality. And... All we had to do was win by one, and that, that was the biggest stop of the game right there. Did you realize in that moment that's the national championship? Yeah. One play? We had to get a first down and, and recover the onside kick, but Fair yes. Enough. Fair enough. Tarpy. But he, he, Tarpy. He's a good listener um, because that's what we said in the huddle. Like the, the strategy behind calling the timeout when we did is to try to see what they're – you know, as an offensive coach, you have two-point plays, and like you list your favorite at the top, right? I wanted them to get to that second one. 
you know, don't don't let them run their their best play to their best player. Uh, make them. I mean, Luke's an outstanding player too, obviously. But make them make them do something something else. And so that was our focus in the huddle. Like, okay, they just showed sprint pick um, or sprint rub, I guess. They just showed sp sprint out. They're not going to do that again. And then they came out in a wider split, and so we knew they were going to do something else. And Jaden and and. Nas, Gene Lubin, freshman corner, Whew, we're right there, dog. Um, right there to make a great play. Additional questions, if we got them, Mark, go ahead. Uh, for Zach and Cole, what was it like to play in that back and forth uh, second half where every time one team scores, the other team uh, answers? And uh, were you, was there a certain point where you're like, oh, they cannot stop us? Yeah, it's been like that all postseason. Yeah. Alma was like that. Randolph Megan was like that. We knew we were coming in here with the hot hand. And uh, we look forward to, to, to games like that. Um, we didn't score many points in the first half, didn't even get in the end zone. We got in the red zone, though. Um, we knew that we had to punch them in the end zone in the second half, and we did. And they kept scoring, and we knew that we had to score. When we get the lead, it's like, all right, well, if we score every time now, there's no way we lose. So that's our mindset, and that's, that's how we uh, play offense. Yeah, I tell the defense every time I come off the field, give me the ball back. You know. Um, when we're rolling, we're rolling, and we're a very, we were a very tough group to stop this year. Um, so I just knew that if we had the ball last, that I liked our chances. Um, you know, I, like I tell everybody, I got the best player Carl in the country, so it makes my life easy. I got the two of the best receivers in the country. Um, the fact they weren't all Americans is unbelievable. If you ask me, um, I think Cole is. I was gonna say he better be. Yeah. He better be. Uh, um, another vision board. <laughs> another vision board right there. <laughs> but that uh, that AFCA thing came out, and I was honestly mad for these guys because they the work that they put in, the, you know, they're they're dynamic two players, and um, so they deserve that. But I just knew that if, if we got the ball, you know, there's gonna be it's gonna be tough for them to stop us. Um, so I just wanted the ball last. That's all you can ask for. Was it just a was that a, a, a very fun half to play, or was it a very nerve wracking half to play? Or fun, or fun, definitely. You know, you don't want to. As much as the Randolph Macon coach will say this, like it, it, that was a lot of fun last week, right? But you know, when it, when you get in the close games, like you can feel everybody tensing up, and um, you know, in those moments, you really see what you're made of, um, you know, from a personal standpoint. So you just gotta, you gotta love those moments. You gotta embrace them because if not, you're not gonna show up. Um, so you know, I pride myself on on those moments, and these guys do too. Um, we've got some cold blooded killers out there, and you know, we proved that today. Not to mention our fans, too. Like, that's a game you want to play in. Down to the wire, national championship, everything on the line, fans going crazy, everybody's on their feet screaming. This comes down to one play. It's like, that's, that's a storybook ending, and, and I'm glad we're on the, the, the better half of it. Greg? Zach, I want to know if you had a chance to get a moment with your dad on the field after the game and, and what that was like for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course I got to see him. I was trying to, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in the field. Um, but yeah, he's meant he's meant everything to me, um, and now I got something to hold over his head, which is even better. So I can get <laughs> get a little get a little edge on the golf course, you know what I mean? But uh, he's been everything to me. Um, it was cool to see him out there, um, and you know I'm just happy that you know growing up in D3 football, this is what you know it's it's kind of crazy. But I thought I'd be playing for a D3 national championship someday. Um, you know I wasn't the biggest, I wasn't the strongest, but I knew I knew I was talented, um, and I'm just ecstatic that we got the job done today. Any more? Oh, yeah. One down here. Please announce yourself. Uh, Matt Zeitner, Cortland Standard. Uh, Kurt, we spoke earlier this week, uh, kind of how you've been around the D3 game your whole life. Uh, I've spoken to several of your players um, from Morrisville, from Cortland. Uh, you went to Fisher. Yeah. Uh, you get here to Salem. You said it was the 50th year. And you, you cap it off with this. What about this group? And what does this mean to you as being around the D3 game your whole life to win this one? Oh, I mean. Yeah, I've been a D3 player and coach my whole career. Um, and I think, like, I think I'm so glad that, that the, the first Stag Bowl that I was able to be a part of was in Salem because growing up as a, as a player at St. John Fisher and as a young assistant coach, like, it was always in Salem, and you see that on, t on TV. Um, I came down here, I think I was a second year as a coordinator, and they, were, they used to have a D3 All-Star game, and they had it here. And Coach Faggiano from Utica sent me a picture of our staff. I was the co coach at Utica at the time. And we coached the offense. And Coach McNeil from Cortland coached the defense. That's great. On, on that team, on the North team. And we won 14 to nothing. And, and, and he, Coach Faggiano sent me this morning a, a, 
a picture of that photograph that he had, like an old school photograph um, of our staff, like our offensive staff. I was, you know, 24 years old or something like that. And it was, I was like, wow. Like, I remembered being here for that. I didn't remember the score or whatever, but just like being around D3 I, my whole whole career, like this is, this is like the holy grail of Division Three football. You put play in the Stag Bowl in Salem. Um, and then to win in a game like that against a team as, as good as North Central is just, it's hard to put into words, honestly. And Zach, <clears throat> excuse me, sir. Uh, Zach, you, you really spread the ball around the night. I mean, you were hitting Joe, you hit Cole, you hit the big one, the JJ. I mean, they're all playmakers. They showed that all postseason. Uh, Cole, you can jump on this one too, but you, you two seem to connect, you know, big moments all the time. Cole had the first one, Cole had the game winner. Um, what is it about you two's connection that you kind of developed to allow you to just really go off in the postseason? Yeah, I'll go to war for this guy next to me, man. Um, I've been telling everybody he's one of my best friends. He'll always be one of my best friends. He stuck with me for life, um, whether he likes it or not. Um, he just comes in, he works. He works his butt off. Um, you know, he's never complaining. He's never pointing fingers. Um, he just always wants to be there in the big moments and make the big play. Um, and I just love that from the jump, you know. Um, whenever I got to first meet him, he was always the hardest worker, the fastest guy, you know, and it was just um, – we had a good connection because we wanted the same goal, um, you know, and we just kind of – I go to him in big moments because I know he's ready to make the big play. Um, and it's really just what the defense has taken us to. You know, they, they – J.J. takes a lot of focus. Um, but you can't take away both of them. Um, so I, I, I just – the love I got for this group, man, is, is unmatched. Um, you know, the, we're going to be 20 years, come back and talk about this team and how much fun it was and, and the bus trips and, you know, sitting on the back of that bus playing mafia, um, you know, and, and it's just been, it's been an outstanding experience. But I think it really just goes down to you care about you guys. And, you know, the more you care about somebody, the more you want, want to win for them. And I think we all just want to win for each other. Yeah, and we got a good connection, but that's like a, a snapshot of our whole offense. This is one of the most the, – we just got a lot of chemistry. You know, you've seen it all playoffs, like Joe I. Devo against Alma, three touchdowns. Dog. Uh, I had three touchdowns last week. It's like – it's not necessarily that it's just us. It's, it's our whole offense. I got trust in all my guys, the running backs, the receivers, the line, that, that we're going to get the job done. Whatever the defense is going to give us, we're going to take it and we're going to get the job done. It doesn't matter if it's me. It doesn't matter if it's Jaden or J.J. We're going to get the job done. And, and Zach's going to make the right read and Coach is going to make the right call. Well, not, uh, there's no comment to be made here on this one here, just to get it on the record on video. Zach, second player in school history to throw for 300 yards and run for 100 yards in a game. Hey. So we get that out there. Congratulations on that. But great congratulations because you led your team to a national championship. Congratulations, Red Dragons, on being the 2023 national champions. Thank you. Thank